Hey guys, Morgan here. I just wanted to give a heads up for the start of this episode. In the filming, we had a few audio and video issues, so there are a few more cuts than normal. I think it's still a decent, listenable episode. I guess I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. But yeah, just wanted to put the warning out there. But with that, I hope you guys enjoy the episode. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Coffee Club Podcast, episode 61 today. We have a very special guest here, Mr. Drew Hunter. Drew, how you doing? Doing doing just peachy. Yeah, excited peachy. to be here. Peachy. That's lovely. Um, I don't know if you remember, but someone promised that you'd come on this podcast. <laughs> oh, man. We talk, really, we've been talking about doing this for a long time dude, now. So. I, remember, I remember getting approached at Pre last year, and then they're like, okay, like, it was like young fans are asking... And they were recording it saying, who are you going to get onto the podcast? It was on Let's Run as well. Yeah, and it went on to Let's Run as well. <laughs> and I was like, oh, we're, going to, we're really excited. We're going to get Drew um, on the pod. Like, really excited to, to have him on. And then we just didn't have him on for months. And we've been trying to organize it. but um, Liars just, here. Liars. They just, got me on now. Just yeah. logistical just issues. Just logistical problems. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what, they call, uh, what do they call it in the business world? It's just, the pipeline was just the pipeline, the pipeline was clogged. Yeah. We had to punt it down to what? Where are we? we November. To punt it to November. But we've reactivated. <laughs> we've, we've reactivated the Drew Hunter. We're here. But we got him. We got him. You know, Tom we Wang. Shout out to Tom Wang, super fan. He was like he because it was on a pretty obscure Let's Run interview where Ollie said it. Because obviously Let's Run puts out at a Prefontaine meet. Let's Run puts out probably a hundred interviews after it, and no one actually like goes and watches them all. But Tom Wang had watched Ollie's one, and then I think in my Discord or something. He's like, guys, like big news. I know who the next guest is going to be on the podcast. <laughs> it's going to be Drew. And I was like, I saw it. And I was just like, yeah, we'll try. Because we were trying, but yeah. at that time you were living in Netherlands. I, yes, I think. that's right. Yep. Yeah. That mm-hmm. oof, that was a yeah. That was a while ago. It was a while ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. Man, this guy's just been <laughs> at your door. Yeah, that's yeah. really funny. Yeah. So anyone that doesn't know, Netherlands is a town like thirty minutes away from here. But it's just like, yeah, driving down the mountain and back up is just... Yeah, it's brutal. It's not that fun. But yeah, we have him here now. Um, coming off the back of having Reed Fisher last week as well. Just ticking off the boxes. Ticking and off the two man box, man. Can we- you guess who's next, guys? <laughs> <laughs> who's it going to be? Yeah. Now, it's not on purpose. It's just, uh, just the way it goes, I guess. But it is good that you're here because then we can check in again with our cross-country champs preview which is have been our big storyline at the start of the episodes for the last two weeks started off by having some shit talking with tin men yeah <laughs> coming up joey's statement um yeah how are you feeling about this uh cross country race december 1st yeah oh okay uh coming off some sea level training which as we were just talking about i haven't done that long of a stint in sea level for a while so um but i actually wanted to bring up you guys uh joey cause so much strife at practice <laughs> Wait, really? because so Jermaine on our team is literally like he's you know Jermaine is like the ultimate sandbagger I don't know if you guys have that person on the team that he'll just complain 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 he shows up he does the work but like he's like he was so mad at Joey because he's like Joey why would you give those guys who have run gold medals, com games, you know, world stands. Why would you give them any little bit of extra just juice and motivation? And uh, so, we, like, we all were just kind of like chewing out Joey at practice the other day. And um, dude, I fucking that's all, that's all, yeah, all yeah, needed. It's all that's me, all man. I, yeah, I yeah. took Joey put out the bait on that nice little hook, and I fucking yeah, yeah. took it. I took it, mate. I was like, you yeah. want to, you want to start, Joey? Let's start. Yeah. I was like, let's make this yeah. exciting. But. Yeah. Uh, no, I love that he yeah. said that because I was like, this kind of building up that mm-hmm. banter and that, that fire because that was the one thing that we talked about Reed, with Reed last week yeah. was that if you get the fire on the Tim Man, get their bellies rumbling, they're yeah. going to pull, pull out um, a pretty doozer of a run. So And then Reed spent the whole episode making excuses about why he wasn't going to be racing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't have, he didn't have anything happen recently. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Reed's on vacation tour, so he, who knows what he's going to be up to the next few months. But You I'm, are racing. What? The plan currently is that I will be racing. Um, I was really excited that they're only scoring four. I just found this oh, out. I didn't know that either. Didn't yeah, know that. it's you four. You guys didn't know that? No. Oh wow. Yeah. So that actually makes me feel a little bit better. Um, I feel like I can be a strong number five. <laughs> um, <for the> <laughs> That's not the attitude that you want to have. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. Well, I actually now worry that it's four. I was hoping it'd be five yeah. because what's I, the tiebreaker? Six? I don't know. You could be the fifth man tiebreaker. Y- you're right. Yeah. So, no, it, we'll see. It's gonna I, be important. Yeah, I, I'm excited. I, it's it's so weird now because cross country, like, um, you know, I'm sure we'll get to that. But like, I didn't run college cross country, but high school cross country was objectively my favorite sport in terms of the three seasons um but the pro level obviously 
it's kind of it can be an afterthought so it's really cool that we're bringing it back but i'm like i'm eager to hear how you guys feel about this cross country compared to like you know when you represented you know your your you know colleges and everything that is actually a really good question because i think all three of us so all four of us on this couch are probably similar in that regard that we all grew up racing cross country because down under like cross country season is like so fun it's so good track is cool but personally i didn't do track until i was 16 but i did cross country every year from when i was eight years old because it's just kind of how you do it with school and all that so it's like i met through cross country oh really like we met at cross country like when we were probably nine Nine. and all that and so like you represent your state at nationals and it's really fun new zealand comes over and races Mm -hmm. representing new zealand at the australian nationals and you do that from a young age so it's really cool and then yeah obviously you didn't get to experience this but collegiate cross country is i think like the coolest form of this sport like literally in the world i think it's on a separate it's just on a separate like sphere to like representing your country because you dream about representing your country from like whenever you start the sport but just in terms of having it such that like the guys that you're training with every day that you're putting in all the work with then being able to go out and race with them as a team you just don't have that like anywhere else in the sport so like NCAA cross is i think is the coolest thing ever and we're going to talk about that more because this is NCAA cross week as well but being able to do a cross country race as a pro representing your pro team i think is cool because it does encapsulate that a little bit like we literally obviously live together train together just like kind of like a college team whatever and we get to go race and represent the team and i think you're right it's pretty unfortunately it's pretty irrelevant in the pro level cross country that is but to be able to do it in some form I think it's pretty special. Obviously, I wish that there was a better way to do it, like make it more important and make it so that more people do it. Shout out to the <laughs> Chicken, Chicken, Chicken Boy League. The, Chicken Boy League. This, the, the, yeah, the Super Distance League or whatever. <laughs> I wish that existed, but it's just not going to just yeah. because this is kind of the off season and yeah. track is just where it's at for whatever reason. So, yeah, I think we all feel very similar to you. I'm yeah. sure we'll have a debrief after about how we – feel that, about it compared yeah. to our last team race in cross country but i think like the fact that there is a race this year and there's prize money and there's points is like yeah. at least there's progress yeah you know because a couple of years ago there was nothing yeah and then last year you know they made a bit of an attempt at mount sack defending champs oh yeah and so you know if if this is what we've got this year and we can keep building on that yeah. And, and we just keep hyping it up on the podcast every single week. <laughs> it's what you got to do. I can't picture like getting more hype for a cross country race than have Mike Smith whispering sweet <laughs> nothings into my ear before a cross Mate, country. Don't and like Mick, I don't know if Mick does that either, but <laughs> well, Mick <laughs> would say the most random shit. Yeah. Like, Mick would like. I think there was a video of him yelling out, "Where's Seth? Where's Seth?" And no, Seth no, had ran so, past him. So, so it was, where's Tyson? <laughs> so, oh, Tyson? Where's Tyson? Uh, what Ollie's referencing, and this is like. This is we Classic have te- we have textbook George. This is textbook Mick. <laughs> this is they flow track pretty cool. Mic'd him up for I think it was Nutty Comb. Mm-hmm. Our, that was it was called the chip on our shoulder, Mick. Yeah, he's like, everybody's looking at us. Everybody's yeah. like, it's like, dude, no one cares. He like, had such a funny like pre race like in the bus like before we got out. His thing was like so funny. We're like, Mick, are you just doing this because the cameras are here? It's like, <laughs> like, what's going on here? But then the funniest thing was, I think on that day Tyson Mihi was our fifth man. And the camera's on Mick, and you can see everyone running by, like, right next to him. And Tyson runs past Mick, but Mick doesn't see him. And then Seth is off, is the next guy that comes by, and Mick's like, where's Tyson? Where's Tyson? Where's our fifth man? Where is he? And then Seth comes by, and Mick's like, Seth, you're our fifth guy. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta pick it up. Yeah. And then you would just see Tyson run by. So that's classic Mick shenanigans at Cross yeah. Country. You do, those, the characters in the NCAA do make it as well 100%. like the people that yeah. have been there forever like mick and yeah. mike whitmore and yeah like just well, all those and people. obviously mike smith this is, a, this is a great episode to bring up mike smith multiple times will they all like i'm sure we will yeah. i thought we we're gonna go through a lull stage and we don't bring him up anymore but i guess you oh know, he's, he's, he's hot right now he's hot right now <laughs> he's hot right now he's hot commodity bye yeah. bye 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 yeah 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 don't sell don't sell mike smith stock yet um we just got to create those characters and yeah, i think a mike mike'd up coach it uh cross i mean mike'd up dathan would be hilarious yeah what will what da- what, what's dathan like pretty intense he's intense okay. but he just yells he just yells stuff like i can imagine because in, even in track races he yells like pretty, well the small low key race like obviously the big meets can't really get close to the track but the small low key meets he's like yelling stuff and um i find it really funny 
He's definitely a good character to follow yep. because he's so passionate and yep. he has so much emotion. Like when you're racing as one of his athletes, like he probably has more emotion than you have. Oh, when mm. Joe won yeah. USA's, like I've, oh, we've yeah. mentioned this before, but he was screaming and sprinting up and down the place. Like he's, probably, he's got a broken foot. He's just running up and down the place. Like he's just so passionate about yeah. his job. So what about uh, Coach Hunter? What, what would she be like mic'd up? At the cross. Oh yeah, so stressed out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Good. Um, I I think like the screaming and yelling from the coach is way more for them than the actual mm. athlete. It's like the amount of times I've finished a race and you know, like my dad or like my mom will come up after and be like, "Did you hear me out there?" I'm like, "Absolutely not." Like, I have no <laughs> idea. And my mom is hysterical. Like. Wow, you know, just like <laughs> screaming. So um, that would be, I don't know how much of the footage you could actually use because it would just kind of be in, incoherent. But uh, yeah, like it, I, I think that is more for them to be like, okay, I'm super nervous. Let me just project this out into yeah. the universe. Make me feel see. better by yelling at you. Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay. Who's so. the most entertaining coach in the pro running world? In pro running? Ah, oh, dude, that's a tough one. That is actually yeah. tough. Like, who's who's just the biggest character? Okay, so okay, let's probably let's, Alberto Salazar. Let's, let's, let's wipe out. Let's wipe out a couple straight off the bat. Great coach. <laughs> straight, straight off the bat, Mike Morgan, Mike Morgan Morgan comes out yeah. hitting, hitting the boundary. Yeah. Straight off the bat, Jerry Schumacher isn't interesting. I don't. No, think. see, he's interesting. In it's his a own mystique, way. though. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's yeah, like yeah, the mystique about him. Very mysterious. Interesting. I feel like there's got to yeah. be somebody that's interesting. To, like I think. That's one thing that college coaches has over pro coaches. Is I think pro coaches are too composed in a certain level. They're a bit more composed, whereas yeah. college coaches are a bit more like, I don't know, G'd up maybe. I think, I think you just don't get exposed to pro coaches enough. Maybe that's what mm-hmm. it is. Because I see college coaches all the time, like getting yeah. G'd up, getting excited. Like you see videos of them after like their, their athlete wins NCAAs or something like that. So yeah. it's just, I don't know, maybe the pro coaches... Like Dayton, for example, when Joe won USA's, that was cool to see. Like, if you hadn't mm-hmm. mic'd up for that, that was unreal. But, we, you, you know, it's hard to, to plan those things. But in general, I think it's interesting just to see how the pro coaches are going to deal with cross-country races because there's so much more, like, yelling you yeah. can do at somebody in a cross-country race than you can do on a, on yeah. a track, per se, depending on the event, obviously. But Yeah. I think my answer for this is... Ben Thomas. Ben Tom. Oh. And the reason I say that is he has, he's one of the only coaches that has his own unique system that has not been taken from other people. And I know, like, maybe that's a, that will piss people off by me saying that. Um, congrats. We're all copying people. Yes. Wickets, et cetera. Yes. Wickets. <laughs> wickets. Hills and 200s. Okay. Long run. Oh my gosh. Revolutionary uh, long run. Revolutionary. Yeah. <laughs> You guys are doing your little canyon stuff. That's a uh, that's that's a uh, that's new. That's our secrets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I can't expose that. No. I mean, no. Those you guys are all on Strava all, now. I was gonna say that's all yeah. that shit's on Strava. Yeah. Yeah. True. You're the only one not. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Ben Thomas has his like he's so quiet. He keeps to himself and like the training that he had like Cooper and Cole do like you know I've like witnessed little bits and pieces of it and it's just very very different and I think like Mm -hmm. I'm like I want to know because you guys are really good so it's like you know it it, it, but then again it's like you're right it's not like a personality thing it's more like that mystique factor of like why why are you doing that it's the same with like Bauman like I'm sure a lot of Bauman workouts aren't like projected into the yeah. Strava verse, whatever you call it. Strava verse, yeah, that's what you call it. Yeah. I think that is what, I think that's what everyone calls it. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that before. Strava's yeah. not related to like, um, is it like a social media? It is a social media. Kind yeah, of. Say? so it's like a social, me- like a TikTok or something. Just like it's TikTok. It's pretty much like TikTok. I think it's, I think yeah. it's like TikTok. It's like, like the most cool. running specific social media. I feel yeah. like so it's like B real as well, like B real, TikTok, <laughs> exact same, Strava, exact same. all in the same kind of Strava verse. Yeah. Um, in general, I feel like Bauman doesn't post. Their workouts. I don't now. think they're it's allowed not about to. In general, no, they're, yeah, they're not. They, yeah. they do not. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry okay. is secretive. The only reason well. why I said in general is because I don't know. <laughs> because Be- I don't Beinfeld posts but- so. Who? So I'm I'm gonna get him in trouble. Aaron, <laughs> Aaron Beinfeld, Oregon's best runner. He posts everything on Strava. I have literally been just like Go in their exact out. plug and play Bowerman workouts. Really? Yes, and Whoa. it's like, and it's so impressive. I'm like. <laughs> yeah um, i spill some beans come on well it's just like it's like the classic jerry stuff it's like okay 10 miles of work on the track you know like four mile tempo then like you know five to six by mile repeat after like like you know cla- then you know the hills and 200s they, they do that stuff you know the long run cut down it's like it, it's not like revolutionary stuff it's just like okay like you guys do this consistently all the time and you know you're running your mile repeats and 415 or whatever and so it's like or you know grand probably is and stuff but 
Yeah, yeah. it's it, it is. He's like the one person I know who's hosting some stuff. I wonder if Jerry knows. I'm that's a good little. Get, that's a trouble. good little plug for anyone that mm. wants Jerry, to find Jerry that out. Jerry definitely listens to this podcast too. So yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. Cooper used to have a. I only just recently. Cooper got definitely Strava, did used to have a big Strava. Yeah, like, did. Tens of thousands of followers. I yeah, think, and it is now blank. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. so interesting. I didn't think about that because yeah, yeah I would. I have. Like speaking of Ben Thomas and yeah. Jerry, I have gone down a loophole looking at Cooper's Strava. Yeah. The reason I got there was because he was arguing with some kid about something, which was really funny. <laughs> but I was that's what got me there. But what made me stay was Ben Thomas's training. Yeah. Interesting. And I was like looking through it's, it. And it's hard to actually even understand it. Exactly. It's like, it's like I said, it is uniquely his own system. Like one workout you can maybe have like one workout that you're like, okay, I've done something similar to that, but it's like the rest is so mm. specific. The, like they'll do like, I mean, I watched Cole in Finland, like he did his race, he cooled down and then he was doing like these like walking drills in between reps. Like I was like, this is literally like an assigned part of Ben's program that is like so unique. Like, why are you doing that? I wanted to know. Um, so I like that stuff. That's like, I don't know. Like, that's interesting. Is, is Cole still... What is the situation with Cole? Because Cooper's gone to Bowman, right? Is Cole... Yeah. New, Gen Elite. New Gen team. New Gen Elite, baby. So New Gen is... Bro, bros only. <laughs> no, bros. No, chick, no chicks allowed. It's a bros only team? <laughs> I don't know if they're Oregon Track Club. I can't or say anything. Or they they know, Oregon Track Club's gone. <laughs> okay. Oregon Track Club is gone. Because you, the coach, sure, the head coach, mm -hmm. Mark Rowland, I saw him at Commonwealth Are they Games. not just rebranding? No. Ben he's Thomas the head the coach. coach Mm -mm. No, he's no, the head coach mm -mm. of Canada, the Canada's Canadian team. So I think Will Paulson and JK were going up to Canada to like train at a Nike house up there. And like they'll have like international athletes in there, but it'll be mostly like Canadian athletes building up the distance team. And then they're going to like pretty much just get rid of OTC. Well, that's pretty sad because yeah. we did talk about OTC uh, like in OG. a previous episode. Yeah. And then I did some research on it. That is like the OG team. Real OG. Yeah, I'm sure OTC yeah. will still be. It's pro is it the biggest track club in America? It probably is like it, I think it was or point. something. But I'm yeah. sure that will still be a thing. It's just the elite team. Is well, yeah, OTC true, was a, true. It didn't wasn't Bauman and then Pete Julian's group like a break off of OTC? Or how yeah, that, that was like way back in the day when yeah. it was like well, OTC used to be under one umbrella, and Jerry had guys on OTC. He coached Alberto had guys on OTC. He coached like Solinsky was coached by Jerry when he ran the American record, mm -hmm. but was technically on Oregon Track Club, and then it became Bauman Track Club from there and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's a little history lesson. Mm. Yeah. yeah, no, it's interesting. That could all be wrong. No, because no, I do, no, I do true. know that <laughs> at one point Salazar was the coach mm. that like Nike had. Like, this is the distance coach of our pro team, and then they wanted to bring Jerry and his athletes in to be part of that. And I think at one point they wanted it to be like one big happy family. Yeah. But then like they all show up, and Jerry's just like, no, nah, like yeah. this isn't gonna work. Like we need to break off and their own thing. Yeah. That's that's what yeah. I know. I might be making that up. But so, so going what, back to to Ben Ben Thompson and uh, Hulk Cocker. Yeah, <laughs> they are a new gen now. Well, I don't know if it's the rumor official. speculating. The Actually, rumor. they had a YouTube allegedly, video. They, 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 had a, they had a whole YouTube oh, video. So it's all I out. think they're just training. So we're not in saying Eugene. allegedly. We're saying we know. Yeah, mm. I don't think to it's the best of our knowledge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just don't know how official it Why is. Why are because... they not doing cross? Yeah, I would love to see the new gen. <laughs> kit. Why are they doing cross? <laughs> the new gen cross kit. Oh. Yeah, dude. Based on Oregon's cross results, I don't know if you. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna make <laughs> hey, much of a difference. That's why Jerry joined the Oregon yeah. underdogs. Yeah. Underdogs. Yeah. underdogs. Don't underdogs. forget. Underdogs. The underdogs. They're they, still posting about do that. You <laughs> I almost think they like heard us make fun of them for saying underdogs. Wait, what is this? So at the start of the season, now they're just still going. I can't believe they said that. They're still going. The Oregon track and field Instagram page at the like leading into the season had like a picture or pictures of like the guys training and jerry there and their big thing was like where are the underdogs and like like you're fucking university of oregon yeah. like you guys have the most money the most everything you guys are not the underdogs have you heard of steve prefontaine yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have you heard Jeez. of haywood field yeah. <laughs> yeah. phil knight billionaire yeah thanks and phil <laughs> and then it just after like was it the week after conference i think literally regionals. this past week they posted about the women's team being it underdogs, was just a picture of the winning team and one it just said underdogs hey be that easy was, guys i was supposed to go to oregon okay <laughs> come on this is my uh, that's right you didn't go you didn't yeah go. yeah but the funny the did funny, you feel like you were going to be an underdog <laughs> going to oregon no <laughs> yeah they had alter g's exactly. before alter g's were a thing like you know yeah. it's they exactly. did, right? yeah i'm sure yeah like under hayward was i don't know like but i guess i don't know yeah they're not underdogs they yeah. shouldn't be no but it's, i mean we have made fun of that social i'm sure it's the same social media guy yeah Dude, that guy hates us i know he hates, he hates us, us yeah. so <laughs> i don't know his name but. no he literally like, he posted a massive tweet about our comment at Penn, which was quite funny I you thought. guys are kind of controversial oh yeah 
I we like, we like, we like are we, are we underdogs? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we love are we, are we underdogs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're the underdogs. No, you guys are not underdogs anymore. I'm sorry. Dude, yeah. I can't wait for Phil Knight's next uh, memoir, Shoe Dog Part 2, The Underdogs. It's going to be a great <laughs> under- <laughs> Well, Shoe Dog is kind of a... No, it's not an underdog <laughs> <laughs> I love how you were going to try and he went to He went to Stanford. He was like always going to probably do pretty well for He's himself. He's always going to be a businessman. <laughs> yeah, Thanks, was, Phil. Yeah, he was fine. Thanks, Phil. Oh, man. I don't even know how we got talking about that. It was, it was pretty much me starting it with uh, uh, whole cock oh yeah ben what they're doing now because I'm interested if the new den team is like a team now that'd be cool like if they were doing cross but yeah I guess they don't have the team for it I don't even know you like, only need this, four they you have, have Cole, four people they, they do people? so so the, they had a, they so had Ben a, Crawford yeah. Yeah, Ben Crawford's running. <laughs> yeah. Ben Crawford. He's, he's, the low he's, he's the low stick. <laughs> yeah. Dude, he's getting fit though. I saw a photo of him the other day at, in New York. Like he was out for a run, I think. No, he has gym. been running. He looks really good. Yeah, he yeah, has been I'm running. Excited. But they do have like a team of like five to six guys, but I think they're all like 1,500 guys. Yeah. And I don't think they're like... Oh, yeah. I don't think oh, they're like, a 1500 Yeah, guy. I was going to say, I don't excuse? think they're like cross 1500 guys. I think they're my like 1500. I train with Joe Klecker. That's my excuse, bro. Yeah. He's yeah. yeah. like Reed, Jack Urian. Matt, yeah. Cole, Matt, yeah, Matt Wiesner was there. Yeah. Uh, it's like eight hundred fifteen. Yeah, eight fifteen guy. Yeah, so well, that's yeah. probably I mean, that's not going to be there. Yeah, goes. I mean, cross champs could be if every team showed up with all their heavy hitters. It could be really, really fun. It'd be amazing. Like, it, Get the hot going for yeah, sure. Yeah, like I think, yeah, it it could be, and I think maybe it will build into that over the next few years. But it also has to make sense. This really is the only time of the year that you could do it, so it's like it's um, also a great time of year to do it. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think last year they they dicked it up with the course though, right? Because that course is not great. Yeah, you you guys are smart to not run. <laughs> <laughs> I had like a back problem for like a week after that. We race. were we were literally considering yeah. it, and then yeah, and then we looked. We found out it was at. It was so hard. Yeah, we found out the course, and then Dick yeah. was like, "Absolutely not." We're not doing it. And yeah. then I was like, oh, that sucks. And then I found out why because I watched it. I was like, that course looks fucking terrible. Oh, it was, it was, I, there were like points during the race where I was running six minute pace. Fuck. Like just, just like I, I power walked at one point. <laughs> hands, um, hands there was the literally a video of me. Like if you go back and watch it, like power walk, it, it was more, way more efficient. And the problem is like power walk past Reed in the middle of the race. You Reed started laughing. <laughs> and like then, you know, I'm sure like that didn't help him at all. Like, so yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of of a shit show but and you guys won though so yeah <laughs> got a returning done. chance right here <laughs> didn't yeah. Dylan Maggard win that race yes yeah. when yeah. he's come back to defend his I title I he is yeah. I mean he's that guy's a ball he's a racer mm-hmm. he, he loves say, like, he's, he's really he's good at cross mm-hmm. he, he, no he's in I think he just trains in Utah no yeah yeah. He, okay. he, with his college he, team yeah, yeah. yeah he's he just like uh, like volunteer assistant coach and yeah but Sweet. I, I that's so impressive like when you're training by yourself like that and you're I mean he ran like 13 12 like he you know he's a like also a very very good runner i didn't realize how close he was in the 10k like us the he's us forward. 10k yeah he was like right there yeah he's like literally like right there behind like yeah. these guys so he's amazing and yeah. hopefully he's there and yeah balling out that's what ollie and i were talking about on the run today like who's gonna be there and i was mm-hmm. just like we like dylan maggie didn't come to mind but i yep. knew there was like a bunch of guys that are you gonna said be like, like three that. to five guys that would probably be really good yeah there's that type of runner that's really good at cross country it's kind of like the steeplechase guys yeah. sometimes where it's like they're so bad at other events, but somehow they can fake it in the steeple and run like world standard times. Mm-hmm. No offense if that's <laughs> yes, you like, out there. Um, don't know why. That you're doing great. You, yeah. Uh, that made me think of the Very Nice Track Club. Are they coming out? Yeah. <laughs> very Nice very nice Track Club. Dude, I forgot about them. Shout out. Um, I don't know. <laughs> very nice. I mean, is Nick Wilson coming back for It's or? really hard to keep up with other proteins if they don't have a podcast. You know what I mean? I agree. <laughs> like, yeah. like, that's why we're starting one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, t- 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 man is really hard to keep track of. Yeah, I know. T- yeah. man is the hardest team yeah. to follow, man. I yeah. don't know what's going on. You guys on, don't man. post yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. guys are open at all. I don't yeah. know what the hell's going on. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's not uh, enough YouTube videos. Yeah. Okay, not. we'll, we'll make back. some more for you. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. But you, I think you're 100% right that like this year, hopefully it'll be epic. And But then, yeah, looking hopefully every year it does continue to grow mm-hmm. and hopefully they can continue to do a good job at like dissecting the specific storylines and getting to the teams uh like who like the members are and the coaches because that's what they've already put an effort which is so cool to do it this year they've had a kid called is it colin yeah mm-hmm. colin's out here like hired by sound running i believe he's getting paid to get content on he's been getting content on us at oac tin mm-hmm. man also roots running i'm not sure if he's been doing anyone else yeah but it's all because like it's all leading into the sound running meet and it's actually like pretty cool maybe it's just because like i live in this like boulder bubble 
where it's like just that but if you could do that on the bigger scale with mm -hmm. all the teams like you knew like Bowman was coming and you could cover them for example that would just make it so much more exciting i think that's hopefully the goal so. yeah Colin yep. did a great job yeah yeah no for sure i i do think like i i hope that there can be some some way to kind of make this a, a, an event in the future that everyone shows up to i mean what if the prize purse was you know the team got 25 grand or something you know it's just like okay yeah. like then all of a sudden it would maybe you know have some Bama just never it. cares about money i think some yeah. people just don't care about money enough yeah, yeah well i mean like, uh, the one thing I do would, you guys not really see i don't really care about money but i do care about like it's yeah, nice though yeah <laughs> well, <laughs> well in oslo and coffee then, table yeah. i was just gonna say right? nice coffee table yeah. but in general i think it's nice to be able to like i don't know how many times i'm gonna say this but having all those teams at one meet for a fan particularly a fan in like a big mm -hmm. city like that it means so much to them to be able to have like they could have a group of 10 people and like mm -hmm. some of them are Tim Man fans some of them are OEC some of them are team boss some of them are Bauman fans if you have all those teams in one place you can have those kind of like I hate using F1 always as a reference but like a massive like kind of row of all these teams doing signings for posters or pins or stickers yeah. like that just builds hype around the sport and it just makes it so much easier to be a fan of it because it's very hard to be yeah. a fan of the sport especially yeah. that they're doing it in conjunction with the the mm. big running conference yeah. event thing mm -hmm. hopefully so if you build that up maybe that's yeah. going to be something that's an incentive is that a, a brand will look at it mm. and go well we have a great team with bowman as not i mean nike doesn't give a shit about much yeah but you have a great team with bowman this is a big you know thing we can bring it and promote like our team we can get you know good hypes for our fan because they sell merchandise maybe have a little like tent up selling bowman merchandise do the same with tim man do the same with oac the thing is good. you need the merchandise to exist if you're going to sell it well obviously so we, what don't we, have merchandise. we don't even have a social media so we'll probably just sit in the corner and just wave at people <laughs> <laughs> now we got pins we oh, got, got pins, pins. Yeah. We got pins. Yeah, yeah yeah but we'll scarves. Scarves. Yeah. scarves i mean i have seven thousand pins geordie's sold out because you know Jordy's were girls. hot demand. The hot demand, high school girls. Jordy was selling them on eBay for hundred dollars a pop <laughs> yeah. per pin, and they were I just can't selling. I can't give mine away. Yeah. People give them back. I don't fucking want your pin, bro. Yeah. Um, but in general, like that was the idea that I have with the cross country thing, Drew. Yeah. It's like having those teams and the, their base, and then also promoting themselves, giving out their merchandise or pins or whatever, mm -hmm. but also being easier for fans to engage with. Yeah. I think is the one thing that I'd love to. I would be more incentive based by that than the money. Yeah. Purely just to be able to engage with fans. Because when you're at bigger meets, it's a bit harder. It's more individualistic. Yeah. But this is a team thing. Yeah. So that's exciting about it. Hopefully, yeah, like you said, it progresses and builds. And How do we get Gus to Austin? Um, I've already got that planned. <laughs> on, on it's in the they, pipeline. On said the they pipeline. won't pay for our trip, but they'll pay for <laughs> He's more important. Yeah. yeah. That he's got a first class ticket and a private jet. He's actually traveling with Lewis Hamilton's uh, bulldog. <laughs> no uh, way. Austin, yeah. That's Austin's awesome. a good place to have it too. I think yeah. that's yeah. important. Is like you can't get these events and then be like, all right, we're having it in Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah. Hey, yeah. Where, <laughs> you know? where did that come from? Yeah. No. Sorry to anyone who's listening yeah, from yeah. Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska. Yeah. But Sorry, in general, you're 100 yeah. percent right. You, like, like California, you, Texas. you have to have it in yeah. place that's there's a running, somewhat of a running culture. Mm. It's accessible. Flights are somewhat cheap. You know, it has to be like, and it has to be a place people are excited about because, you know, this is, like you said, based around the running event, which is that huge running expo. So it's like, okay, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, boxes that are being checked, at least for this. Was, was the fan engagement good at Mount Sac last year? Because obviously yeah. issues with the mm -hmm. race, but California in our eyes mm -hmm. is like the spot, like around yeah. LA area, like yeah. that's the spot where you get the most kids going crazy. Was it pretty cool at the it, There was definitely like there was not a single point on the course where I felt like I was like, there's no one here, which is nice. Um, it also is like, you know, you want a course that is spectator friendly. So like that, we had loops in that course, which yeah. helps because people can run back and forth and, and such. But I don't even know what the Austin course is. Do you guys have we, five we looked one at mile loops? So it should be really, really good for spectators. It's at, a, it's at like a high school. It's oh, it's a miles. track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're just doing an AK track. on the yeah. track, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, yeah. Wait, what are you guys been training for? That's what we've been getting ready we're for. We've been on the track. <laughs> yeah. We've been ripping it, bro. We've been ripping it, man. We were just out at uh, some turf fields. That's, oh, okay, yeah. so you're, you're ready to go then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, think this is our Olympic is. Games. We're <laughs> defending champs, guys. Come on. Do you have, will you have like on your jersey like defending championship? Yeah. Can you please? It yeah. should be a trophy yeah, with like engraved. Of course. Yeah. That's that's. uh Shit, I'm starting to think this is just like a cross champs podcast. <laughs> we it just is. keep talking about it. And it's yeah. like, like I said this to Drew before we started. It's just so funny that we're talking about it so much because yeah. in reality, objectively, it's just not that big of a race. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've never talked yeah. about a race this much. Yeah. It's just not that Are big you guys doing a world cross? 
No. Nah. If we were, we wouldn't talk about it this much. I yeah, guarantee yeah. you. I might be doing it. Uh, it's in the it's, it's in, in the we're, we're trying to we're trying to work it out we're right pun- now. We're punting it to when Ollie is later down the road. <laughs> in general. But the one thing I'm focusing on is this 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 <laughs> meat. I told you. I can't that. confirm all, that. I'm confirming all Shut I, up, Drew. <laughs> all I'm talking about, all I'm thinking about, all I'm working towards is this cross country championship. <laughs> and that is it. Dathan literally said to me, you're only focusing on this cross-country championship race. I look in the mirror in the morning, cross-country championship. It's Austin. written up there. It's I saw it, yeah. yeah. It's written there. We're shutting down after this race. Yeah, yeah. Literally, I'm going on a two-week vacation to Bahamas. Everything's been there. Yeah, we're just getting ready for next year. We're getting ready for next year's cross. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, can't wait. It's going to be such a fun yeah. race. Dude, I feel like we're going to like obviously it's gonna be really serious and focused on the day but i mm-hmm. think it's gonna be like the funnest oh trip dude i can't wait till straight after the race everyone's gonna be like okay so where we're heading yeah. <laughs> where we going? we're gonna go out for a drink it's in the afternoon area? yeah mm. isn't that weird crossing weird. i was i was gonna say that's kind of weird because always in the morning cross races. yeah yeah like i think that'll be like you're doing a shakeout run for a that would be nice race. though that's weird it is weird yeah. it's at, i think the race is at 4 p.m or something yeah. they must they must have school that day yeah which Dude, why wouldn't you just let us run during, during school, school time? Like, Dude, imagine get some fans oh, out there. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> the teachers looking around going, what the fuck? There's all these old people running around <laughs> our what's school. What's going on? But uh, yeah. yeah, so obviously, as you can tell from our... I don't know how long we just talked about that for, but it was like <laughs> way too long. Uh, we're very excited, and that's what things are looking forward to. Very excited to match up with Tin Man and everyone else. Hopefully, Drew's out there racing as well, <laughs> we hope. But... The other big thing, well, not the other big thing, the big thing of this week is NCAA Cross, mm. which is actually a really important cross country race. I wouldn't know. Drew wouldn't know. <laughs> Zero time All American. Zero time All American <laughs> on the couch right here, Drew Hunter. But the thing with NCAA Cross Country is, like, literally from like a competitive standpoint, but also from a fan standpoint, I think it is kind of like arguably the most exciting race of the year and that's like matching up against everything else that you do as a college athlete it's just the one race where everyone is there it's always like crazy always just like people running so quick people dying there's always some kid who you've never heard of who comes top 10 and there's also also like some of the best runners come like 200th Mm -hmm. it's just so exciting and then the team battle which we were talking about this before as well like we haven't been doing a great job at following the team battle but we will give out uninformed takes which I think on the men's side, well, actually, Ollie did say he's done research. <laughs> and I don't know if he was lying or not, but I think on the men's side, it's going to be Stanford versus NAU is what I'm hearing. I, that, that is definitely, I, I mean, I feel like it's a four-way race, don't you think? I think it's a four-way race. I don't, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's, from what I've been able to do a little bit of research on, I don't <laughs> think it's a one, like a one-team straight-out favorite. I think it's a four-man, four-team race. What are the four teams? Those two. <laughs> Those Wait, two. no, let Ollie do it. Let Ollie. Those two. BYU. Right? Wait, go. One more. And then um, Wisconsin. <laughs> <obviously. laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Wisconsin, baby. Come on, let's shout go. Shout out, Mr. Liking. <laughs> Dude, shout out, shout out Go Badgers, through. man. Yeah. They're going to come through with the win. That was the right answer. That, that was, was the right answer, right? They did look good. Who was the fourth team? Yeah. They look good uh, at regionals. The fourth yeah. team, I'm pretty sure. Know? I do know, okay. but that was funny. Uh, <laughs> Wait, who was the fourth team, George? Because I actually don't know. Home, home, home favorites. Oh, o- Oklahoma. Oh, Oklahoma. Actually, yeah, I forgot about Oklahoma. They go under the radar a little bit. Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. There's, there's that other uni. It's called uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma State. The the orange one. <laughs> the orange one. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. have like a legit individual champ person contender. Whatever it is, Alex Meyer. Alex Plus, Meyer. Yeah. Isai has been top three. Yeah. Like, Years ago, he's still there. Uh, yeah, but I don't know if he's running. So what? What is Michael they, Smith going to say to the NAU team leading into this? Because it's obviously like this could be the uh, the Chicago Bulls win, right? Is three, it three three? But actually, this is the last dance. This Wait, is, is it dance six win. from seven? Yeah, three on. That's one crazy. Oh, wow, and three on. This again. would be the Chicago Bulls win if they win this. Yeah. So what would Mark Smith say to them? Go to I sleep. Think, I feel like you have the best insight into Mike Smith's mind. I mean, yeah. If we go back to the kettle of fish analogy. In general, I think Michael would just kind of talk about how it's the days of their lives to be able to be in this position, to enjoy it, to experience it, to soak it in, but also know that they've done the training and that they should trust in each other, trust in brotherhood, and um, yeah, just go out there and try their best. And if they don't win, well, then they're going to have to find their own way home. <laughs> yeah, but in exactly. general, I think, I think Stanford... Stanford, I see, I like Charles Hicks, Kai Robinson. I love those two. I reckon they're going to freaking get after it. Because, like, you know, 
I think they have the best. I think they have the best top three. Yeah, watching them at Nutty, I was like, these these dudes are here. They came to play. Some ballers out there. Yeah, and I feel like mm-hmm. Nutty for me is always a good indication of how they're going to go at nationals for some reason. I don't know why, but when I watched Justin Knight run that cool win he did, when I watched Mark Scott run well there, when I watched Morgan McDonald run well there, those guys always turned up at the the big natties with um some 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 big swinging balls. So in general, I'm excited for Kai Robinson. I'm excited for uh, Charlie Hicks. I'm excited for NAU because I feel like they will turn up, but I'm very excited for Wisconsin because I think with the Wisconsin boys, we have this curse. Morgan, I know about this. Uh, Wisconsin, like this is Big Tens and Beyond kind of thing, whereas like Mick focuses on Big Tens. Big Tens is where it's at, and we always turn up at Big Tens. Well, usually, sorry, not always. most of the time, most of the time we turn up at Big Tens. But then after that, when we've had a really, really good team, we just never perform at nationals. So hopefully they can break that curse. Yeah, nationals is just so hard, and it's like it's like every year we get there and we're like, what do, what did we do wrong? Like after we didn't perform well, we're mm. like, I feel like we did everything, and then we hear about and he's doing double thresholds, and we're like, oh. That's what we're doing. That's, where, that's what we want to do. Yeah, you it thought, you thought 10 miles of work was a lot. Try 12 miles, yeah. buddy. I know. Yeah, what I are we lo- doing? I, yeah. Those I, are college kids, man. <laughs> Bosley. I love Drew Bosley. He's like my favorite runner. Him yeah. and Josh Kerr. Yeah. Dude, him and Josh Similar, Kerr. Yeah. They want a podcast, man. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, Josh Kerr has a podcast. What's it called again? I'm not sure. Oh, I forgot. We'll get, uh, <laughs> um, Drew, Drew should start a podcast. Yeah, I actually am. Uh, Tin Talk Pod. Um, <laughs> the Drew, Drew, and Drew, Drew, and Drew, Drew and Drew. Drew Hunter and Drew Bosley. The Drew and Drew. There we go. Drew squared. Drew um, squared. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I uh, was so... Um, how do I preface this? I got back into town a few days ago and um, my realtor and friend, Sarah Vaughn, she's a really good marathon runner in Boulder. Her daughter runs for Boulder High and they were doing their like award banquet thing. And she was like, hey, could you show up surprise and like hand out awards to the guys team? And I was like, yeah, sure. It was at their house. It was really great. I show up and the kids start asking me about NCAA cross. And they were like, and I said something about Stanford. And they were like, it's so boring that Stanford's a contender. They're all the best guys. They're all the smartest guys. <laughs> I mean, it's They're, true. Yeah, <laughs> true. And I was like, man, like, and I was thinking about, I was like, these are all like just the best individuals. Like there's not really, you know, like, and it was like, uh, they, they get the best talent every year, everything. And they were like, it's just boring. And I was like, so you're just rooting against them for that? And they're like, absolutely. And I, I was like, that. I was like, also, you guys are in high school. This is like a hot, like I did not, I feel like, you know, my junior and senior year when I was getting recruited and stuff, but I would not have had that much insight into right. college running at that age. So yeah, we definitely yeah. said that once we didn't go to Stanford. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. So we called them robots. No, yeah, that is some good insight, though. I mean, it is true. Like we and we have said this before on the show. Stanford. I don't know what it takes to be on the Stanford team, but all those kids now are eight fifty two miles, or probably even quicker than that. Yeah. And it's like you got that They're much talent coming too. in. They are the annoyingly good looking. They're all like looking. handsome. They're fucking smart. They're you know they're going to be your boss one day. Are they day. test tube babies? What yeah. the fuck is this? It just doesn't like NAU at least has like that. I mean, Nico Young, come on, like that guy's Nico Young. stud. But stud, um, yeah. but like the NAU guys at least have a little more edge to them. You know, they're a little more rugged there. Oh, yeah. you know? oh, Up yeah. in the mountains, like yeah, yeah. doing their thing. I mean, actually. Lumberjacks. Yeah. Stanford has Cole. What's his name? Cole Sprout, Sprout. from Boulder. Yeah. And that guy's got tattoos. So he's probably pretty cool. Yeah, he's <laughs> probably pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so they both have their merits, I guess. But NAU, man, it's like if they can get this done, that'll be pretty legendary because this season they they haven't been dominant like they've been in previous seasons. And I guess, yeah, they haven't been dominant every year that they've won nationals, but generally they are pretty dominant from like the first race. Like when you were there, I don't know if you guys ever lost a race. years ago. <laughs> I lost one race. Thanks for the reminder. Oh, did you? <laughs> oh, there's no support one, right? National. <laughs> lost one race in four years of cross country. That's crazy. Wow. The last one. I lost a lot more than that. Did you well, cry? Yeah. I didn't. Well, you, I, you won the last I lost, one. I was honestly just never very good. But as a team, we lost one race in four years. Like, what was like, like, how did you process that? Like, was it just like immediate, like, this sucks? Or is it kind of just like sh- more shocking and you didn't really like come to grips with it? It was so painful. Really? Physically. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, okay. Physical pain. Yeah. Honestly, I think, yeah, it would have been epic to yeah. win four in a row. But I think it was the best thing that could happen for the team. I think mm. at some point, it's just better could, to just be like knocked off the top and given a reality check. And mm-hmm. you know, we had we'd just been showing up every race that it would ever run. 
and just you win every one of them. Yeah, it's good for NAU too because they don't have to pay Mike Smith that bonus anymore. <laughs> They're like, fuck, thank God. He's not taking any more money from us. Yeah. We can just like, we can not pay him this time and then the next couple of years we'll, we'll be able to pay him for yeah. winning. I think, and I think the team came back so much stronger yeah. what, in subsequent years. Well, I mean, that, that what, next year they, they crushed it, right? Yeah, what coach, what coach say after the race? Like, do you remember? Is, it, is this is getting it, too intimate? Am I Chuck bringing Wood. up trauma? He's about to cry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, this is a good. This is a good video of him actually. He is it, got a, a flow track documentary. Yeah, right? there's a good interview of uh, Smith after that. He he's got you know he's got that way with words. He does. He is a but, wordsmith. <clears throat> yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. There's not much you can the worst, say. The worst yeah. day we had in four yeah. years, and we came second. Yeah, and it was pretty crushing. Yeah. Different uh, from our experience. Yeah, I'd love to come second. I'd but that's what, second. that's what the NCAA yeah. Yeah. system yeah. can do, you know? Well, like, that's, that's, what, that's, how that's how what happens mean. when you win all the time. I think you just like, you, mm-hmm. you forget what it's like to lose. And that's how much it means to every person involved in it. 100%. I mean, when, mm-hmm. when uh, I think it was, I don't remember which, which one it was, but there was, I think it was after, it was a Big Ten, so it wasn't Nationals, but I think it was a deep Big Tens after, I think we didn't win a Big Ten. I think Michigan won. And it was my maybe a freshman year. So we, that was a big that was a big one because I think people were very emotional. After so that. your Ollie's freshman year, we had lost the year before, like that was like the year before that was when the team imploded and we didn't even qualify for nationals and we ended a forty eight year streak of qualifying for nationals. <laughs> yeah, in fact, right. thank you. And uh, then the next year was a big comeback year for us on a small scale to NAU's coming second and then winning again next year. Uh, ours was winning Big Tens again and qualifying for nationals, but. By far, all these like spot on winning Big Tens that next year was like the most like intense like team experience. I, I was a freshman and I didn't. I was pretty shit, but I noticed like Tyson had a, like like ran like took down twelve people in the last like K to win it, and um, I remember we were all in a circle and this is my first experience of like cross country in general. Mm-hmm. And we're in a circle and I'm looking at everyone's faces. Everyone's crying. Mick is crying and it's Big Tens. It's not like. It's not nationals, but it meant so much to I think for a lot of those athletes to go through that hardship and then reset, refocus, and then go again. That's what cross does to you as as a team thing. So like when Morgan says that like NCAA cross is like one of the biggest meets and races, it is because like it means so much to not just one kid to seven kids that line up on the line. So yeah, and you're running for each other as well, which is cool. So so yeah, that's why it's so special. And so yeah, we haven't been paying that much attention, but it's still like. We're going to watch the race, obviously, and I think it's going to be amazing. And mm-hmm. we haven't not only not been paying attention to the men's, we also haven't been paying attention to the women's either. Very surprised. So our takes on that <laughs> are not going to be very informed, but apparently the NC State women are going to crush. I watch them at ACCs. I actually do. Yeah, like I watched them at ACCs, and it was pretty. I mean, Caitlin Tui is. Nah, she's a, yeah. She's like. Um, but incredible. it's also just more impressive, like the, like the rest of the girls behind her are, even if they had like one or two, like, off races like they've you know they've got they, six and seventh runners are as good as a lot of other people's you know third and fourth them. so yeah. um they're definitely uh yeah that's a great program yeah they're the favorites if and you're then, a betting man you bet on nc state yeah. i think new mexico is ranked up there i yeah. think they might be their name they really well they didn't were, they tie well they were really they had they had an amazing race at acc's but it was close with it was like close ish with NC State, and so that's what I'm saying. Like they had a, like they're probably gonna do pretty well. I mean, if they replicate what they just did, you know, you actually has a chance to podium with both teams. They really, really they rank second and fourth for the which women, which is that's incredible. Awesome. Yeah, because be when so I special. got there, when I got to NAU, the women's team wasn't even well. The men's team also didn't qualify, but the women's team wasn't even close to qualifying for nationals for the first like three years I was there. Yeah, and then Smith like put in a huge effort to mm-hmm. build up the women's team yeah and now they rank fourth in the country which crazy. is crazy pretty wild i wonder when that's threshold been... can do. <laughs> yeah <laughs> works for everyone but i wonder when that's been done before two teams podium probably stanford or something uh colorado oh I'm sure byu so you, did. yeah so did actually, madison did they i think the women won and then uh the men's were third were they he would know citrus mag check that out know. byu had two individual winners Last yeah, yeah, that was they probably wild. did pretty well. Also, uh, just talking about individual winners for the uh, isn't there a Florida girl that's like yeah, really Parker Valby. So think, like, would yeah. that be a cool battle between Caitlin Tui and her? I'm sure there's gonna be 100%. other girls there, but no, that'll be definitely that'll be a good race. So that'll be a cool yeah. race to watch just for the individual battle because yeah. I, I think there's like a couple girls that are just. I feel like we need some ridiculous. wild predictions. 
uh, Wisconsin women win the uh, win, <laughs> win, and then the Wisconsin men win too, and Mick just retires. He's like, that's it, I'm out. <laughs> I would retire if that happened as well. Our apologies for that brief interruption, but we were finishing up our recap of uh, or our predictions on the women's individual and Sibley cross results, and all I had just said, Caitlin Tui's going to win. Yep. Caitlin Tui. Caitlin Tui. Agreed. Caitlin Tui. And we all love Caitlin Tui here. I don't know. Like, I, I, I want to be different, but I think Caitlin Tui is going to win yeah. as well. We're the Caitlin, Caitlin Tui fan club. So we Gus, love who do you think? Tui. Did he say Parker? No, nah, I said <laughs> Caitlin Tui. <laughs> Gus, 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 heard Parker from Gus. Gus said Caitlin Tui as well, I think. But uh, so the women's, we're going for Caitlin, unanimous. The Team? men's. Oh, um, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just going to the underdogs, Oregon, probably for the win. Probably Oregon for the <laughs> Shut win. Shut the fuck up. I, hate Actually, I don't did, know if they're good. Did they qualify? I have no clue. They, no, they must they have, did. They they must must have yeah. qualified. Yeah, so Oregon. Will Shalane Funny be there to coach them, do you reckon? I thought she was running. Uh, she's running in the race? Yeah. I, thought I think she was she's got some eligibility. Yeah. <laughs> no. I thought she was in New York doing another photo shoot for the New York Marathon. She um, found some eligibility. Okay, so my we're we doing women's, women's picks? Well, Wait, so the team? we already kind of talked about the women's teams, about yeah. NC State being the favorites. But are, so you're saying Oregon for the win for the men? <laughs> <laughs> no, now we're going men's individual. A men's not? individual? Oh, um, Kai Robinson. Kai Robinson. You know, do you remember who you said last year? Charles Hicks. Yeah, you said Charles Hicks last year. See, I, I love Charles Hicks love to win Hicks. as well. So Charles Hicks or Kai Robinson, but Kai Robinson because he's an Aussie. Yeah, I like and that. And I like Kai because I met him at Coms and Worlds and he's a, he's a chiller. Nice. Uh... Drew Bosley. Drew Ooh, Bosley. I saw Drew that Bosley. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, That'd be so start. epic. That'd be so yeah. epic if he won. He's that would be pretty that. sweet. Yeah. I'm going to go with Nico. Yeah, I think I was going to go with Nico as well. I feel like it's his time. That's good. Three different people. Yeah. 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 We did well. Fun. Well, here, here's a bonus trivia question. Will Nico Young run in a hat? Or not because at regionals, him and Drew Bosley. That was my favorite thing after yeah. regionals on Joe's story. Yeah. It's like, you know, you boys. Ram regionals and hats, they're a lock for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's confidence. I'm right thinking there. about wearing yeah. a hat at cross jams after seeing that. Me too. It'll look good. Dude, we like should get in- some visors. Oh, I your hair would look good with the visor. We yeah. need it some would visors. Look good. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah you would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they went incognito. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. It'd be like, I guess all that picks up. I mean, Drew Bosley is a. Is a that's a dark a, horse. That's a dark horse. That's, that's what I mean. That's I a good want pick. Drew Bosley to win. Yeah. So I'm that's how that. you should. That's how yeah. you should make your yeah. picks, rather than just being boring like us and just mm. picking who's like probably <laughs> just objectively the, the favorite. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's hard to keep up when there's just so many kids that are just like so amazing yeah. and you just don't even know. And once you've been out of it for as many years as we have, where like we're not even on the team. Like we weren't on the team with any almost anyone that was there. I guess actually we overlap like one the, the seniors now maybe were were there when like we yeah. were there, but we're, like. Dude, I'm too old for this shit, man. <laughs> what's what's <laughs> Yard's teammate's name? Who won the 10K? Dylan Jacobs. Oh, yeah, yeah, Dylan Jacobs. But he he didn't even win a conference. No, he didn't. And so we're, we're not even talking about all these amazing runners from like Alabama and stuff. Like there's just so many good kids out there. And if you're not actively really like dialed in and paying attention, it is hard. But yeah. we, we know a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. And so those are our professional takes. And so that's the... NCAA cross roundup. Obviously, as I said before, very excited to watch it. Um, I don't know. That's kind of it for that. I think it'll be a, a sweet race as per usual. But yeah, we'll be paying attention. I'm sure a lot of you guys will as well. But moving on from that, we obviously have Drew on the show, and we don't really do like interviewee style stuff. We haven't done really proper interviewee style stuff for a, a little bit. I guess we have with Reed and stuff, but. Yeah, Drew, you've had obviously a very interesting career. I mean, probably the most interesting career that I know. Just I don't know what it's like to be a to be a U.S. high school phenom. I have to imagine is something you're just not going to get that anywhere else. The amount of hype and attention, and then obviously going from that into being a pro, like you're not going to be able to do that in many places as well. And then as a pro, I mean, being a pro as I know, it's very challenging, has its ups and downs. But the last year in particular has been, I think, pretty cool for you because obviously you would probably say like that was a pretty good up for you, no? You started yeah, winning a few one. more races this year. Yeah. yeah. Again, like st- found the, the winning ways again. I Win- feel like that's important. <laughs> winning races is really important and it doesn't matter necessarily the level, but like I, I used to win races a lot, obviously in high school and stuff. And I think like that, Same. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like it's so hard to win a race at the pro level. Uh, maybe, you know, 
maybe your guys' perspective is a little different on that. No, I agree I, with that hundred percent. Even at your level, Ollie, it's like you have to race Yaka. Dude, I've run, I've run, and uh, I've been very, very fortunate to do extremely well in my professional career. But it's funny, I've never won a Diamond League. Yeah. So like, yeah. For me, like for me personally, like obviously that's mm-hmm. a really high level, but I haven't even won one of, the, one of those races. It's yeah. just so hard to do it's when so you get hard. into all of these professional races. It's very hard to win because everybody's just so good. Yeah. So it, it, just being able to win any type of race, like you said, it's just like yeah. winning is just, it's good because yeah. it gives you an idea of like, okay, that's how you win a race. Yeah. It's good for the soul. Yeah. I think, yeah, hundred percent. I think there's also like, there is such a different type of runner that like a first place runner and like, a second to fourth place runner like it is such a different mentality how you approach the race how you approach training um like you have to really wake up every day and say like i'm a winner i'm gonna train to be a winner i'm gonna do you know all those things yeah, yeah. um and i feel like i started to try to do that again and, and like i said you gotta take baby steps like it's you know it's not like i'm winning diamond leagues it's not like i'm even winning u.s championships but it's like oh okay like i can show up to a race with guys who are you know world championship caliber runners and like win that heat yeah. or whatever and and that was like something that i'm like okay like let's just practice that mentality let's practice those race tactics and let's you know really make a conscious effort to kind of like chase that it's definitely exciting to see that mentality because i think that's the one thing that people in the professional world struggle with is like you want to have respect for everyone on the line but you mm-hmm. also want to be like i can beat everyone here yeah and particularly when you are not maybe not performing the way that you thought you would um, or you don't have a season the way you think you, you, you can and you're just starting to lose a bit more confidence and maybe when you go into races, you're like, oh, you have that in the back of your head. But if you have that mentality of like thinking about winning again and respecting everyone, but just like, yeah, I'm going to try and win this race um, and respecting the caliber. Like that's just like the whole mindset of that is just so crucial in, in professional running because it's such an individual sport and you're, you're the one that's going to be on top or second or third or fourth. So like the way you describe that mentality is really interesting. Yeah. It's first place and the second or fourth place, such a different mentality. Yeah. I think it gets lost in pro running. hundred percent. When yeah. so much focus is put on times. Mm-hmm. Cause you're like, I have to run yeah. standard. Then I'm just like happy to be at worlds. Then it's like, okay, get fifth place in my heat so I can qualify, be safe about it. It's a very like safe, way to go about your running career. I talk about this with like Reed actually a lot who you guys just had on. Um, Cause like Reed is all, Reed is so damn consistent as a runner, but Reed is like, I want to show up to one of these half marathons like Houston and I want to like win. Mm. And he's like, I like, he's like, I've never like, you know, he's like, I've never had to like foster that type of mentality. He's like, because I've always been like, okay, like, you know, your race plan you know like the shape you're in and you're going to dial get that into you know the five to ten second range of what you you know you can do for like a half or a marathon and he's so good at that but he's like at some point i just need to like run reckless and like try to win something take Um, a risk yeah yeah Yeah. um and it's it's and i think like i want to do that you know as a goal for next year is like i want to do more of that i mean i have you know two years you know basically of like okay like there's an olympics coming up and it's like i haven't made you know the one team I did qualify for, I couldn't run it because I was injured. So it's like, I really have nothing to lose. And it's like, I I want to, you know, get back to those winning ways. But also, I really want to, like, be able to, you know, after 2024, just say, like, okay, maybe it didn't go as planned. But I I really tried. And I really kind of, like, you know, went for it. So um, that's something that I'm hoping that I can kind of continue to foster this year. Yeah. Not to be, like, contradicting any of those points, though, because I do agree, but you would you ran 334 mm-hmm. this yeah. past year which surely that was one of your highlights and like yeah. we did talk about competing but when you run a time like 334 that's super validating no mm-hmm. cuz then like once you've run that time yeah like i guess it's like what comes first the chicken or the egg you probably ran that quick because you were in that competing mindset yeah. cuz that's the mindset that you thrive in and that's mm-hmm. kind of the mindset that we all thrive in i would say yeah. like mm-hmm. there are other people that thrive in more of a time trial mindset but once you've run that time then it, mm-hmm. you just feel more comfortable because then you're like yeah i can race that's kind of like next level you know that's like you can race definitely. with uh yeah. yeah a lot of good guys it's still not obviously like it's not 329 yeah it's yeah like that's still like the next level but this mm-hmm. is the thing i think three thirty. if you break 335 you're competitive like look at yeah. mario for example like mario it's true broke three uh, but did he, he ran i think he was 335 coming into world yeah I think. but he was on yeah. the, he was no, on the yeah, cuffs. he's yeah. probably in 334 shape right yeah but he was competitive yeah like and then he goes in and competes 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 330 at yeah. worlds 
So like yeah, yeah. your mindset is definitely mm-hmm. a good contribution to where those times can hit. But like yeah. running three thirty four last season, it just shows you you're in mm-hmm. that situation where like yeah. you can compete with those with top caliber guys. Um, it just remind like you thinking about that. I got all these names for Drew in my head now. I have like not Drew Hunter, Drew Hunting. You know, hunting for the hunting for the win. <laughs> I have Risky Drew, Risky Drew. <laughs> Drew's coming in the last two years. He's not known as Drew Hunter anymore. He's known as Risky Drew. Risky I was Drew. wondering if you were going to have any nicknames for Drew. Because <laughs> yeah, like, we never said a nickname Drew for Drew Drew was just giving before. us like a nice little like just kind of uh, rundown of like where his mind is and where he's moving forward. All I can think about is what what can I name Drew? What can I name Drew in my head? Risky Drew. Risky Drew, Drew Hunting. Yeah. Um, that's good. No, that's yeah. exciting though, man. Like I think um, that's a hard thing for professional runners to, to mm-hmm. have like that mindset. So it's cool yeah. to hear, um, hear you talk about that. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I, I do think you're right as well. Like the time validates that the headspace I'm in is the right headspace, mm-hmm. you know? So it's like, okay, you know, I'm putting myself in these races and, um, and yeah, and I think, uh, I, I do think, you know, that is kind of, um, like I was saying earlier, you know, I talked to Ollie at Joe's wedding and Ollie was like, I got to stop putting Jakob on this pedestal of like, oh my gosh, it's Jakob Ingebrigtsen, you know, the the guy who's going to run 326 and you know mm. like all these things he's like no i got to show up and like i got to say like i can beat jakob i can compete with jakob i like um i mean i saw you in oslo you know it's like you're flirting with that mm. like oh i was definitely flirting with him no you yeah. weren't that mate. I was yeah on and off the track, <laughs> <laughs> off the track. <laughs> um so i think you know like that's i i i uh, i want to you know yeah. kind of continue to to do that so yeah, well, that's very exciting coming into the next year. I, I definitely agree with all of this. Like, you know, once you run, run that quick, you see it happen all the time. Like, mm-hmm. people make that next step, and then you're right there. So mm-hmm. that is super exciting. Um, I think we're going to wrap it up pretty soon, but is there anything else that you want to you wanna speak? I have one here? question to ask you. That's right. okay. How is it like being coached by your mom? Yeah. It's, like, it's just interesting because, like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not – I mean, mm-hmm. I know Jake Whitecastle, for example, was coached by his dad. Yeah. And his dad's relationship, like, he talked about it with me about how like he has a relationship that's just separate like he has a relationship with his dad that's a, a coach mm-hmm. and then a relationship as his dad how has that been for you having your mom coach you um at, at the professional level and i like, coach the team yeah. like coach coaching your whole team pretty much yeah i i would say it's um i do you get special treatment absolutely not <laughs> i think it's actually the opposite and i think every guy on the team would tell you that yeah. like if you sat like i think my parents are probably even like harder on me which is like totally warranted and yeah. i think honestly like you know smart considering just you know it, this is at the end of the day like they're a coach of a bunch of professional athletes that are trying to be their best and it's like you can't really favor one or the other it's like mm. okay everyone has individual needs everyone needs to be taken care of etc cetera, etc cetera. and so but it, it's like been i don't know i think you guys joke earlier like tin man like another youtube video and stuff like i feel like like we've you know there's a lot of there's like there's been a lot of hard things about having like my mom as a coach that i feel like i've you know i don't necessarily like to talk about to the public because it's like i so want it to work Mm. right where it's like okay now it's not like you know from a distance my mom obviously wants the best for me in my running career but now that she's my coach like it's kind of directly correlated to that you know where it's like okay my running career is a little bit in her hands yeah so you know there's a lot more pressure with that. And I feel like, um, you know, there was some like low points at the last, like I'd say like last year and a half where it was kind of like, you know, this is like, this is really hard. Um, I, we've, you know, we've done a lot better. Like, um, like, like you were saying with like Jake and, uh, his dad, like I'll go over Like, you know, Sandy and I will basically try like Sundays, like a family day. And so like, we'll go over to my parents' house on Sundays or they'll come over to like our house. And like, we, we like we try not to talk about running where it's like we basically just have like a mom and son normal relationship Mm. we talk about everything else but that you know cook dinner together you know and and i think that's been really healthy to like kind of keep that perspective in mind as well that yeah at the end of the day like you know your mom wants what's best for you and even if my running wasn't going well like my mom would want you know me to be happy and healthy and you know all those things so but it it, there's definitely been some there was some there were some hard moments last year that it was kind of like do we need to reconsider this? So, um, and that's not the perspective that, you know, like you'll get from me. Like, I'm not going to go out and overly share that on social media just cause it's, I don't know. I feel like it's, it's a personal thing. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It is a little bit personal. So, um, 
No, it's, but, just, it's just yeah. definitely, uh, I mean, I noticed just being at the track, like we have those groups and you can mm-hmm. tell like the vibe and energy. I think yeah. when Coach Hunter came in, I just felt like a re revamp mm-hmm. of Tim Man, like a really fresh mm-hmm. kind of feeling. And she was very, very like, I don't know, your mom's very polite, very nice to the track. She's yeah. always cheering people on, like yeah. regardless of what team they're with. It just seems like a good energy there. Yeah. So like it's exciting to see from that perspective, mm-hmm. yeah. um, your mom bringing that in for the team. Um, it's just interesting because I think, yeah, having having that relationship professionally and then just personally with with mm-hmm. someone like that it's 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 a i can imagine a challenging thing so yeah it's really interesting to see it go and i mean she's done a great job so far from yeah. what i've seen so it's exciting to see yeah. what's going to happen in the future and um yeah no i just i thought that would be an interesting question to ask yeah that's a good question i mean it's good. it's obviously mm-hmm. very challenging especially yeah. the way that you guys do it like because it's not like see jake whiteman it's a slightly different in terms of like jake whiteman's dad is only really coaching jake whiteman and then just some people who want to train with jake whiteman i think you guys it's a whole business it's Mm -hmm. a whole it's it's a lot more so there is a lot more pressure there and it's a a brand so you guys are dealing with all that and managing all that stress and that's never going to be easy so uh, a lot of respect for it but yeah thank you very much for coming on the the podcast it's just been lovely to have you on here and chat and obviously we wish you the absolute best. We're, we're big fans of Drew Hunter. Of we're, we're, Drew, we're, we're a Drew Hunter fan club, and oh, I'm very excited. We, <laughs> we got you on, and hopefully uh, this experience will let you feel like you can come back on anytime. I'm just pop, I'm just popping over. Yeah, yeah. Pop over. you know where Get we live com- now. I do, yeah. 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 You know where we live. Grab but, a sandwich uh, from uh, Boxcar yeah. and coffee. Yeah. yeah, well, we'll be here, so anytime you're welcome. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you, everyone, for listening. We'll see you guys next week.